For cyclists, the bicycle is the ultimate tool for freedom. For the maker, the studio is a sacred space. So today, I'm going to take you on a journey through my personal cycling world, where each bike tells a tale and every corner reveals a hidden chapter of my journey as a professional maker and dedicated cyclist. These are not just objects, these are artifacts. These are not just spaces, these are dimensions. But with all of these bikes, there's no way I can thoroughly go through all of them today. I need your help to decide which bike deserves a deep dive for an upcoming video. So clip in as we take an exclusive look at the bikes and studio spaces that make up the Everything's Been Done universe. I have had many studios over the years, from basements to studios in other neighborhoods, which is how I came to realize what the perfect scenario of a studio was for me. And that's to have an outbuilding in the place that you live. There's separation between church and state, there's no commute, it's all in one place, it's great. Home, studio. So in 2016, this became a reality through the construction of the art house. It's essentially an overgrown tough shed. And then I did all the crazy stuff on the inside to make it habitable. 22, 23. Seven years later, just as happy as the day it was finished. And this studio has two floors. The main floor is composed mostly of camera storage, live streaming studio, Zwift setup, and deep storage. And in this studio, there's two by, well, no. My spiritualized Sith, which has new bearings and it's ready to party. Ooh, those are smooth. And back here is my Colossi track bike. It's Scandium, a custom build, and definitely has a story. These are interesting. These are a shoe collaboration I did with Adidas skateboarding several years back. And this project actually never happened. It got right to the finish line and they cut it, which is too bad because it's pretty cool. These are reflective commotion textile pattern. There's regrind in the outsole and the outsole is a little stiffer. So it would have been good for a bike and this this is also interesting. This is the first shoe collaboration I ever did. It was with a brand called DVS and it was through a company that I founded back in 2003 called Cadence. First of its kind, lifestyle cycling apparel, RIP. These were cool though. These were kind of ahead of their time. This was major during the track bike boom, 07. Has a super Samba influence to it. A cool detail on these, the license plate on the back said Fast Friday, which is a cycling event that I threw in Seattle in 06, 07. There's a whole documentary about it. I'll put the link to it down below. Baby Dustin. That's a custom cav helmet that I've never even opened. Is anybody curious about custom helmets? Let me know. I don't know. I, I, I was like into it and then I just kind of lost steam on it. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize there's another bike in here. The bike that I use on the trainer absolutely has a story. It is a very secret bike that maybe I'll tell you about. Let me know. Which I, I ride often in the winter and absolutely never in the summer. This is a cheap Telecaster I got off of eBay and the previous owner inscribed all the notes on the neck, which I actually thought was kind of cool. Quick gear dork moment. These super rep Nike indoor cycling shoes. They're kind of brilliant because they have bolt hole patterns for both two bolt and three bolt technology. Brilliant. But I've been running the Adidas ones just cause they're, they're, I don't know why. I don't know if this counts as another bike, but this was a bike. I had this funny habit of cutting up bikes that I was done riding because I didn't want other people to ride them, but I still wanted to keep them but not the whole bike. I rode this a lot in the early 2000s, aluminum Raleigh Track Pro. I, I don't remember the model name. This is a picture that I wheat pasted of my buddy Rob Salimo on the bottom. And he's wearing a shirt that says broke hose is a no-no. Oh, there's way more stuff in here than I expected. When we did that Adidas project, I thought it would be cool to paint a canvas and then turn that canvas into a small run of shoes, which, actually happened. 
There's like nine to 10 pairs of these shoes, each one completely original, hand painted. This is this canvas in this photo. Also, never saw the light of day. I mean, I love skateboarding, so I had to make, I had to do it. That's a plant that I grew in the backyard at some point. And then I decided to modge podge it onto a light switch plate cover. But it's a real, it's a real leaf. Hey, I wanna show you upstairs, but first I'm gonna show you a couple bikes that we have in an outside bike parking spot. Anybody else out there got an extra bike or six? that they've been meaning to sell, but you just haven't been wanting to deal with Craigslist? No, I will not hold it for you, or even worse, offer up. It clearly states pickup only. Well, lucky for us, there's a new player in town looking to change the game in the pre-owned bike market. They're a small group of cyclists that go by the name Bicycle. Like, B-U-Y cycle. Bicycle. Com. Oh, I get it. What makes them so special? They offer buyer protection, secure payments, and they even have ultrasonic carbon fiber checks. It's a girl! To look for stress fractures and delamination in carbon frames. I could probably use that. And for those of us whose partners think we have a bicycle problem, the selling process is streamlined with suggested pricing, a fast, convenient listing option. That's nothing. I heard Ron listed in under three parsecs. And your posting will have a global reach of over 30 countries. Take that, Craigslist. Not to mention, they'll send you a box, shipping supplies, a label, and schedule the pickup. Ah, <sighs> thank God. So whether you got a road bike, gravel bike, mountain bike, even a tri bike, they're interested. They're like a pre-owned bicycle cornucopia. Is that how you use that word? So check out bicycle.com to make all your pre-owned bicycle selling and acquiring dreams come true. I really, I'm really hoping you're N plus one in here, but if you sell and replace that, that also works. There are three different bikes in this section of this bike parking. There's Ellie's Commuter Fabulous Eddie Merckx, my custom camo painted carbon bomb track 650B gravel bike, my first road bike, this Decordi from sometime in the 90s. This thing has so many stories. Was a messenger on this bike for many years. It's steel, it's got interesting tubing, it's got cool wheels. This thing, this thing rules. And we do lock them up. And there's actually one more bike in this bike storage. It's the rad powered truck bike. You know, I, I'm not the biggest fan of this bike, but it is utilitarian. It gets the job done. They're affordable, but. I have heard that they do not maintain very well over the years. Okay, now I wanna show you the upstairs. But first, it's kinda of nice to have a spot that's dedicated just to washing your bike. You know, maybe it's a little excessive, but it's so helpful. All right, let's go upstairs. A couple notable things about the stairs. One, I'm very proud to say that I built them. The treads are bleacher seats. And with the dead storage space, I made drawers to put things in. Big paper things, actually, which are hard to store. And there's another bike. This is a Villier. Yenna with the custom decline DCO disruptive commotion overlay. This is the Tundra colorway. It was supposed to be for testing one of those SRAM suspension forks. It doesn't work on this frame. There was something about the tapered head tubers. I don't remember. Also, notice this pattern from that other bike, custom Richie stem we did a long time ago and stop emailing me. I do not have any of those for sale. This is a collaboration I did with Hi-Fi. It's a custom camo print out of photographs I took in Forest Park. Oh yeah, see the watermark? I'd never seen a camo wheel before. And I figured Hi-Viz Orange is kind of awesome. These might still be available. If they are, I'll put a link to them down below. And this is the upstairs or the loft of the art house. This is by far one of my favorite spaces in all of the studios. 
And I also spend the most time up here. This is where I edit all my videos. Shout out the sit stand desk. And does anybody ever use these? They're awesome. It's like a weird little balance board. Keeps your ADD mind at rest while you're working on stuff. Oh, and this is a monitor that you can draw on and it works okay. Here's another bike. This is a Villiers Yenna carbon fiber gravel bike, which I repainted to match a van that I had. And then I got a different van and I painted that van to match this bike, which looked like the other van. Interesting detail. That's bed liner. I made a video about repainting this bike and people got so butthurt about the Exxon stickers. It's subversive people. It's supposed to be offensive. So I guess in a way I'm glad they got mad. <laughs> I decided to build out these bookshelves in the studio as a place to just store books and different things that I have. Functional, somewhat space saving. This chest has a lot of archive cadence, early handmade clothing stuff in it. I could absolutely make some episodes about the things in here. This is cool. This is the head tube from a Panasonic track bike that I had in the early thousands. This is the bike I rode in the MASH video. It was flexed out. It'd been broken. It was just soggy. So I cut it up so I could still keep a part of it. And I always thought it would be a cool handle on a door. But I don't really know how to weld, so I've never done it. But maybe now's the time. I think it'd be great in the workshop, which do you want to see that? That is where the bulk of the bikes are. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. This is our little lean-to storage, which also houses a couple bikes. There's the Santa Cruz Skitch, which I made a whole video about. E-bike, gravel bike, ripper, flat bars. And the Canyon, is it a Grizzle or a Grail? I don't remember. Purple People Eater, that thing's fun. Aluminum. $2,000 gravel bike. Also made a video about that bike. Now, this is the workshop. This is a bike and grimy, dirty making space that only a mother could love. Now, this space was constructed because my wife, Ellie, took over the garage for her company, Clum House. And all my crazy bike stuff needed to go somewhere. So it went in here. And this is basically an overachieving shed. It's got power, a little insulation, and enough room to get yourself into trouble. And this space houses eight bikes. Don't get out of line, there's plenty of outside spaces to store you in. There's bikes like my Ibis DV9, a purple hardtail that just won't quit. I love that bike. This is my fake little bike shop system. The irony is, I tend to work on bike stuff more on that bench than this bench. Why is that? And my orange turbo commuter, an electric carbon fiber e-bike that is perfect for getting around town. Honestly, I would actually ride the Skitch more. I just don't have fenders set up on it. So I just, I ride this one in the winter and then that one as long as it's here when the weather's dry, which is not in the winter. This is my main gravel rig. It's a Villier. Yenna DCL. This is the jungle colorway. This thing's cool. I put the most miles on this bike on gravel or when I'm graveling or, or, or the, the, yeah. And like any self-respecting workshop, the heart of this operation is the workbench, which I've also rigged up with this one pole camera mount system. The thing that's great about this filming setup is I can make all kinds of racket on the workbench and it doesn't move the camera. This is my Fast and Furious Villier Cento 10 Pro. Electric yellow screen machine. Love this bike. DI2, carbon, fast, fun. The East Wing is chock full of tool storage, shoes, and spray booth. And I stole my air compressor from Drew Tyndall. All the bikes are mounted on this system called Steady Rack which I'm a huge fan, space saving. Remember when you could buy posters at the department store and they'd be all lined up just like this? 
Did posters go obsolete? Right next to the Ibis custom painted Exe. This is a made in USA version. This bike rips so much fun. And I kind of painted this bike to match the van and this helmet. What can I say? I like stuff. We've also got my carbon fiber bicycle. It's my sports bicycle. This is a ready ripping specialized Epic. This thing also rules. This bike is almost as light as my gravel bike, which is insane. Considering it has a hundred millimeters of suspension. Those bars are weird too. Send help. That's how I feel every time I ride that. My buddy Fergus sent me this. These are paint samples from different Ritchie bikes. And they're actually on carbon fiber pipes. And they're so cool. I've never been able to figure out what to do with them. Any suggestions? We've also got the Salsa Cutthroat set up as a bike packing rig at the moment. Recently, I have been wanting to ride this bike a bit more. I just got to take all this crap off of it. But this bike is very fun. Super, super capable. They categorize it as a drop bar mountain bike. I think it needs a new paint job too. Although I, I am kind of proud of my poaching the ProMaster emblem from the van and putting it on the on the bike. Now, this is very important. There's skateboards everywhere because I love them. I need you to decide on which of all of these bikes, this one, probably the coolest bike I own, I should do a deep dive on for a future video. Hand painted titanium Stinner Refugio. Imperative that you let me know because I, I have decision fatigue. Can't figure out which way is up. Look at the NV fork with the shred detail. Chris King, bits and bobs, carbon, Jones hoops. This bike rules. Although it's a two by, this bike was made just before the gravel boom. So the clearance is a little tight. And for some reason, I didn't request mounts for fenders, which unfortunately means I can't ride it that often here. Otherwise I would ride that bike a ton in the winter. Oh yeah, this is kind of cool. I got my hands on a Silka pump and was able to custom paint it to match the Stinner. I use this thing all the time. This pump is awesome. And none of this is going to make any sense without this video where I go over the organizational wrangling techniques to keep the chaos at bay. And trust me, they're smart because they're from my wife and I just did what she told me. And that's why this place is so organized. Thank you, Allie.